When hearing about this opportunity to give this TED Talk, I was ecstatic. For it is truly a once in a lifetime opportunity. And wanting to make the most out of it, I voyaged far and wide into my mind palace to look for an idea that was worth spreading. But with no avail, I turned towards the internet for inspiration. What a big mistake. For the little confidence that I had left was shattered because I saw college professors doing decades worth of research, revolutionizing the idea of life and happiness itself. And on the other end of the spectrum, you had youth entrepreneurs creating world-shattering movements, business leaders, patent holders, executives. And then you had me. What rights did I have to share the same stage, to stand on the same red mat as them? We've all had these moments before. Some may call it imposter syndrome, social anxiety, or just a general lack of confidence. Whatever it is, it restricts us. It binds us so tightly, preventing us from grasping at the opportunities that may come our way. And it is this Achilles heel that is innate in all of us, for this fatal flaw made me genuinely consider passing up on this opportunity to give this talk. And yet, I am still standing here before you. And so, in this speech, I would like to share with you a different mindset that will allow you to supersede from this negative one. But before I begin with the solution, let us dwell further into the root causes of this problem. While there may be a plethora of variables, I believe that one of the most significant ones is this initial notion that one has to create an idea that is perfect unique and imaginative on the get-go. I come back to this idea of the internet where it opens up this cruel world where we are subjected to comparing ourselves to the people we see online. And it is this massive surge to create the next big thing for any dull nor boring idea it doesn't deserve the attention nor the platform. It is this impossible standards that we place ourselves that paralyzes us. And so, a balance, I say. Something to bridge this massive canyon. The solution? Gaining inspiration from other people's ideas. There is this famous saying that I'd like to share with you. And it goes, good artists copy, great artists steal. But what I find especially interesting about this is the person who's often cited to have said this. It was Picasso. Yes, the Pablo Picasso, the world famous, renowned Spanish painter who revolutionized the art landscape using his cubic art. And yet him and all of history's great men were motivated, were inspired by the people who came before. Let's take another example, this time of Hamlet often considered as one of the greatest pieces of literature to be ever written. And yet the plot and themes of revenge and murder in the monarchy was not the brainchild of the genius Shakespeare, but actually originated from an old Finnish folktale. But why am, I, why am I presenting you with this information? Am I not just giving a cynical, nihilistic view that is seemingly destroying some of our most favorite, most beloved art and their artists. But I beg to differ, for only by internalizing this somewhat harsh truth can we free ourselves from these unattainable idealistic goals. We must realize that creativity is not the things of geniuses. It doesn't strike you like the smite of God or appear in front of you like some ghostly apparition. Modern societies and its ideas were built on the backs of men and women in the past. And so I'd like to share with you another quote that perfectly encapsulates this idea, this time from another great man, Isaac Newton. And it goes, one can only see further by standing on the shoulders of giants. Now, I must preface this by saying that I am absolutely not advocating for plagiarism of any kind. Outside of the ethical and moral issues which you must already have heard of, it is very counterproductive in attempting to develop your own voice and your own creativity. 
we are merely standing on the shoulders, not stomping on them. But my point still stands. One does not need to reinvent the wheel. And this takes away so much of the pressure to change the world per se. And this would incentivize us to maybe take up the opportunities that may come. So let's take a look, uh, take a deeper look at my TED speech for it is not unique or creative in the literal sense for the ideas that I am developing here are not mine. For the great author Mark Twain has already stated that there is no such thing as new thought. And Austin Kleon has already written a book, Steal Like an Artist, which expounds on this idea of gaining inspiration from other people's work. But my initial devastation of what I thought was my groundbreaking research quickly disappeared when I heard the saying, while there is no complete new idea, there is a limitless way of approaching it. By implementing your own new fresh perspective, your own character and style. Those are the ideas that are worth sharing and are worth spreading. And more over than not, it is not the original product that truly changes the world. It is a secondary one, the one that executes it differently, the one that uh, changes the original product to make it better. Take a look at the world around us, and there are many examples. Google came after the Internet Explorer. Zoom came after Skype. The examples are truly endless, and they show that one does not need to revolutionize to be great. And so this directs our attention away from meaninglessly trying to reinvent the wheel, but instead to improve on it. And so all we need to do is to just start and take the first leap. Thank you.